name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this Aim Learn Fast video, we will learn some tips about how to understand your GPS accuracy while using your Micron 5. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for Aim Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So Roger, the GPS quality of the AIM products are good, but sometimes I want to show to my friends that I actually am within a meter or within less than a meter using my GPS. How do I do that? We have a lot of different tools, right? And, and, and you can look at your data in, in some pretty easy ways and, and, uh, and just give yourself that warm and fuzzy feeling that, you, that the data is good, right? So the, um, when you're going to start comparing data and really look at driver's lines and some other things, it, it always is nice to be able to look at the data and say, okay, I, I'm comfortable with this. Because every once in a while, you know, the, it is a Department of Defense system, right? And, and if the satellites are all off on one side or, you know, the, the geometric shape of them above us is not all that great, every once in a while your GPS quality will be down. So uh, we're just borrowing that technology and just using it, right? So um, a couple things that I do, we have a test open here, and it's a, it's a Micron 5 data uh, from, the, from the SEMA, SEMA track up in uh, north, northwestern Washington. And the... Uh, and we're looking at the data, and I've just got speed up here right now, right? So there, we have a couple of channels that we can look at to give us an idea of the quality of the, of the GPS information that we have. And, and the, the two that I look at the most is the numbers of satellites, which is over here on the left. I'm just going to click on it, and the, and the positional accuracy. So what I've done is I've just brought those up, and, and we're looking at that data on, the, on our best lap of this particular run. And uh, we're going to put the cursor right here, let's say. What we're showing is that at that point on the track, right here where the cursor is, is we were we were looking at we are gathering data from 17 satellites with this Micron 5 right at this point, and that the positional accuracy, which is a bunch of math and does a bunch of things, it's not just based on the number of satellites, but it's also based on where they are in the sky. So if we had 17 satellites and they were all in the you know in the you know southeastern quadrant, you know that would just be a, a clump of data coming down. We couldn't do any real good geometric math with it right so uh, the more they are in the four quadrants and and spread all over the sky some high some low the the better this positional accuracy number is going to be that we're looking at down here in this case it's a uh, 0.82 and that's a you know it's a unitless number in our in our in our display here, but it's uh it's more kind of akin to it, it's about 0.8 of a meter, and uh, uh, you can kind of think of it that way. Lower is better. Numbers of satellites higher is better, right? So uh, the way I kind of look at it is is I want that number of satellites to be, you know, uh, greater than maybe eight or so. You know, uh, you, you see that a lot on the Micron 4s. We almost always have more than that with the Micron 5s, now with the GLONASS system as well. And uh, and then your positional accuracy, if you're below one and a half on that positional accuracy, you've probably got some pretty darn good data. So, uh, so you're really looking for high numbers on the numbers of satellites and low numbers on the positional accuracy. The lower, the better. And then we're looking at one snapshot on one lap here. This happens to be lap six of this data. Another thing that I like to do to make myself feel, you know, feel good about the data and make sure that we're, you know, it was good through the entire run is sometimes I like to zoom out. You know, you can come down here and grab that lap in the, in the test laps toolbar. And you can snap it to the lap before and you can kind of just keep working your way down here and looking at the data. Or another thing that I do sometimes is use the snap function and the time function. Turn both of those on. And then you can zoom out, right? And you can you can pull it along, and you can see more of the data. You know, I've just zoomed out all the way, and you can see where the driver start took off from the line and made all of the laps. There's lap one, two, three, four, five of this uh, of this qualifying session, and then he came back into the pits, right? You can see by the speed trace here. And now you can look at the numbers of satellites while he was sitting there warming up. You can see it was sitting at 14. You know, there's 16, there's 17. At one point, when in the middle of the of the qualifying session, he was up to 20 satellites. So never, you know, there's a little bit of a drop here towards the uh, on the last lap, but it's still only down to 17 satellites. So it's uh, pretty darn good. You can also see that before the driver took off, 
you know, it was 1.5 on the, uh, you know, on the positional accuracy. And, you know, his hands are probably over the top of the steering wheel. The Micron 5, the GPS sensor is right in the top of the, of the gauge itself, right? So, you know, uh, if the driver's hands or the, you know, somebody's leaning over the cart or it's under a, 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 a tent or something before he takes off, uh, you can see here that the, right when he, right when he took off and left the, and got out onto the track, the positional accuracy got better and better. So the, um, you know, for the most part, this is very, very good data all the way, right? So, um, pretty happy with this just looking at it real briefly and the other thing that i do you know, sometimes is is yeah we've zoomed out we've taken a look at the entire thing we'll, we'll jump back to turning off the snap mode and the and the and the and the time mode so now we're back to distance across the bottom we've talked about that in other videos uh, i turn off the satellites and the and the accuracy and just bring up a second lap right so another thing that i do and, and we'll, we'll talk about this even deeper in some in in some upcoming um videos as well but here here are the two laps on top of each other just make sure that there's no spikes and no you know weirdness going on and that everything kind of looks like it's on top of each other i'm gonna zoom in just a little bit you can kind of see that uh, you know it looks like it looks like the, the the gps data is pretty good as well i would expect it to with those kind of those kind of satellite numbers and and positional accuracy so that's what i do when i get a test come in here you know, and 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 open up the positional accuracy and the numbers of satellites throw a couple laps on top of each other and make sure it just kind of kind of looks good that way that that if those things are good you've almost always got really good gps data so that's the end of this aim learn fast video we've been taking comments from throughout social media and trying to come up with new topics that are most useful so feel free to leave a comment below or get a hold of us on facebook or on twitter and just let us know any questions you have or any things that you like about these videos we try to put up new videos every Tuesday, so just stay tuned to our channel and come back for more videos.